It is 7.02. I'm going to call the meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. Um, our first item of business is going to be the Pledge of Allegiance, and then I'm going to ask for a motion to recess. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we have a motion to recess the board select the meeting. The move. Second. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Board of Selectmen meeting is recessed at 7.03 p.m. I'd now like to call to order a public hearing held by the Board of Selectmen pertaining to the town's application on behalf of the Connecticut, Connecticut Trolley Museum for an application for the Neighborhood Assistance Act. Um, so this is a public hearing. Um, that is necessary and required by the Department of Revenue Services, uh, uh, takes public solicitation, public comment on the project application. First, I'd like to ask Mr. Speciali, who is um, with the Connecticut Trolley Museum, to explain what it is that um, they are seeking, how this program works, what the benefit to them was in the last year, and then we'll open it up for, to the general public for comment. So, Mr. Speciali, would you, uh, would you like to take the, take the mic here? Mm. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So uh, essentially, uh, the museum is asking for the blessing of the uh, Board of Selectmen uh, to uh, forward this proposal over to the State Department of Revenue Services. The town is uh, under no financial obligation here. You're just approving this as a, as, as a, a worthy community project. So once you approve it, if you approve it, I hope you do, it'll go to DRS. DRS will put us on a list of projects. The project that we're uh, proposing is to install uh, a ductless heating and cooling system in the office areas of the visitor center at a cost of $18,500. If we get approved and we get on the list for that, then we have to go and find a business or two to contribute the money to us, which will earn them actually a 100% tax credit for the donation. So it would be a win for the museum. Uh, we get something done uh, that we require. Uh, we have a very poor heating cooling system. It's inefficient, it's expensive, it's wasteful. And uh, uh, we would get the money donated for the project by business and the business would earn a tax credit. So uh, that's it. So last year we did this uh, also. And last year we actually managed to get a $45,000 grant, grant from Cigna Corporation. And we uh, installed energy efficient lighting all throughout the uh, inside of the visitor center, the outside, all the outbuildings uh, and lots of exterior uh, street lights and all that. So uh, that worked out well. And that project is uh, now done and uh, Jason will be getting you the report that we're required to give you uh, as soon as we pay the bill and we give you evidence that the money was done and, and that will be an audited uh, statement that you'll get. So any questions on what we're looking for or what the town's involvement is? Thank you, Mike. I thought that was a, a great summation. I'm now gonna turn it over to comments from members of the public. Um, if there are any comments on Trolley Museum's application, their intended project. Um, the floor is open. Name and address, please, sir. Paul Anderson, 89 Main Street, Broadbrook. I'm very much in favor of this. Energy savings is going to be important so we can support our electric cars. That's the man with the hybrid. <laughs> um, are there other public comments? Are there other public comments? Are there other public comments? Yes, sir. Bill Ellis, Melrose Road, Broadwood. Uh, the Trolley Museum has always been part of the town. I know my parents' great grandfather had property right next to railroad tracks over there, from uh, the railroad tracks on Wells Road all the way down to part of the Heritage Road when he first came over here from Germany. And they used to take the trolley all the way going to Rockville. 
So when a trolley's been around for a long time, it was back this property was the old park that they had there. And that was a Piney Ridge Park that they had for the Ferris wheels and merry ground and everything. So people used to be there. We thought that was going to go through. My sister built a house in front of the property. And uh, at that time, 1961, we thought that railroad was going right down through the Broadbrook, across the Broadbrook, stream down here, right from the Broadbrook. But anything the trolley was in could do over there, I approve. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Are there other public comments? Other public comments? Other, are there other public comments? Seeing none, a motion uh, would be in order to close the public hearing. I move that we close the public hearing at 7.08 p.m. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded. It's non-debatable. All in favor of the public hearing, please, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Public hearing is closed. Thank you all very much. Mike, thank you for bringing this to our attention. This is, this is a really cool opportunity to support nonprofits in the community. You guys have been a great beta test. Um, we've seen the success of it, and we look forward to continuing the partnership. Okay, thank you all very much. I appreciate your help. Good night. At 7.09, I'm going to reconvene the meeting of the Board of Selectmen. The next item of business is attendance. All members here are present. Uh, we turn now to the approval of our meeting minutes from the May 8th, 2023 regular meeting. Are there any comments or corrections? Excuse me, Jason. That's fine. Um, I did not apparently make a, a correction that was requested in the minutes. So could I ask whoever makes the motion to, um, it would be under uh, unfinished business meeting room, page five. Uh, the arrangement for the um, the meeting room by others. Um, it would was Melissa LaBelle who assisted and who participated in that discussion rather than Melissa Maltesi. So yep. you could make that revision. I would appreciate it. So would Melissa. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Are there any other corrections? Seeing none, a motion would be in order to accept the minutes as amended. I we'll move to accept the Board of Selectmen regular meeting minutes of May 18th, 2023, as amended. So, motion has been made and seconded. I'll ask again are there any other corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Jason? Oh, yes, ma'am. Who is the second on that, please? Alan. Thank you. You guys don't sound anything away. <laughs> and you can hear me and not her. I know. Um, we're on to public participation. This is one of two opportunities for members of the public to address the board of selectmen. If you would like to address the board, please uh, identify yourself by your name and your address and state your business. Is there anybody here who would like to address the board of selectmen? Anybody here who would like to address the Board of Selectmen? I'll ask again, is there anybody here who would like to address the Board of Selectmen? Seeing none, there will be a second opportunity later in tonight's meeting to do the same. We're on now to, uh, I guess we're up to unfinished business. So um, this is something that I asked to be postponed for one meeting or two. There was a question about the, um, uh, erosion sedimentation bonds that were in place on West River Road and its impact on residents on Shank Road. Um, that's been cleared. So um, we are okay to move forward with the release of bonds. That's a little. Make a motion to uh, authorize the release of the bonds for West River Farms. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. All right. Um, seven to 12. Can we please table 7B seven, seven until after the town meeting? We move we table agenda item 7B until after the town meeting. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 
Opposed? Um, in the interest of time, we have we have two guests who are here tonight. Um, Ms. Ranzi, I, I don't want to rush your conversation, and I think Linda's is going to be relatively brief. Um, so we have to uh, recess our selectmen's meeting at 7.30 to hold the town meeting, and then on the back side of that, we have a lot more time. So, um, Linda, do you think you can get through your stuff in 15 minutes? Okay. Um, then could I have a motion to take up agenda item 8B? So moved. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Linda, the floor is yours. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm here tonight to request that our pilot payment that we're currently at 5% uh, remain the same uh, for the next three years. Uh, we continue to make every effort to keep our rents supportable. And as everybody else, our expenses are increasing. So uh, we would really appreciate having a pilot stay the same. Uh, at five percent, uh, I have put together so I can explain a little bit more um, how the pilot is calculated. Sorry, this wasn't in the five point. Which one? Everybody's got this. Oh, you got it. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So the pilot is um, calculated by adding the rental income and the utilities. And then the vacancy loss is subtracted from the total of the income. And the 5% credit is projected at 21,417. And that can be adjusted depending on the end of the year um, budgeted and financial statements uh, at the end of June 30th of each year, and this year it would be 2023. The anticipated pilot being paid this year is 19,800. So the 21,417 isn't necessarily what it's going to be because it depends on- how This, this is for illustrations purposes. Exactly. Questions, comments? How long has it been at 5%? It's been at 5% since 2018. Okay. Prior to that, I think it was seven. That's seven. I would recommend that they would stick with 5% because of the added expenses and whatnot. And sometimes, was the one that originally approached the board to um, reduce it from the seven to five percent because of financial concerns at that time, um, which are no longer any substance. Um, and they're doing good things up there, so I would encourage everyone to go ahead and accept it for a three year term. I don't have anything to add. I'm okay with keeping it at five percent as well. Okay. So uh, we're going to take a vote on that in a second, but my recollection is that we do this for more than one year at a time. Um, is there, there's actually um, something I think that, that gets filed. Do you have a copy of that? No, I'm sure I have a copy. Yes, that is it. This is twenty twenty. Yep. It comes forward every- Every three years. Every three years, every three years. Okay. Yeah. So, um, begging the board's indulgence, what I would ask for is a motion to fix the uh, payment in lieu of taxes agreement between the town of East Windsor and Park Hill, uh, or the East Windsor Housing Authority, uh, at a rate of 5%, effective from July 1, 2023 through June 30, 2026, and authorize my signature. No, six years. 23 to 26. Three years. Oh, three years. That's the old man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to say next, right? <laughs> I thought that wasn't going to be that. I was told there would be no matter. Very nice. Can I have a motion? 
make a motion to fix the pilot payment between East Windsor, uh, County East Windsor and uh, East Windsor Housing Authority at 5% for the next three years, the term beginning July 1st, 2023 to 2026. June 30, 2026. June 30, 2026. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Oh, yeah, you got a few information. And um, authorized first like we signed. Thank you. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Thank you. Can I give much. this back to you? You can be done. That's okay. Thank you. Can we uh, take up agenda item 8D? I'll move we take up agenda item 8D. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. So um, you'll recall that back in 2020, um, we moved the town's health insurance provider off of a high deductible health plan uh, and onto the Connecticut Prevention Partnership 2.0. Um, that contract that we signed at that point was a three year term. Uh, it has now since come due. And they've provided the renewal information for um, an additional three-year term. Um, I would say that the, the renewal numbers have been mixed on this. Um, the first year was outstanding. Um, we had another year where, where because of some of the um, COVID exposures, I think, um, they missed the mark a bit on what our renewal notice would be. But those problems seem to have been corrected this year. And actually, the information flow from the comptroller as to what we needed for budgeting purposes was spot on and consistently better with each update. So um, I think that the administrative problems that the system has had um, have been rectified. This, if we were to port off of this, we would need to negotiate that with all 14 municipal bargaining units. Um, the, the plan has a pretty expansive coverage in terms of uh, doctors that fall under the umbrella. It is probably the best deal that we can get and our, our exposure numbers were we to go on our own. Um, would be concerning. Um, so I, my recommendation is, and I think Amy can support this as well, that we want to continue with the Prevention Partnership 2.0. Um, so I would need authorization from you all uh, to go ahead and, and approve that and to sign the document. They did get out of control yeah. in the next, say, two years from now. What's the What would it take to get out of it? There is an out provision in there, I think, as I read it. Um, yeah, just it refers to the plan operating document, but I don't have that, but... So if you look on, on page one under term, um, the employer has the right to terminate its participation in the program upon 90 days of notice without assessment of exit fees. Um, so I, I, as I read that, we can get out of this pretty easily okay. if things go, go sideways. Um, again, we would need to have some place probably to go. equal to or better yeah. pull from a service, uh, the provision of service and economics to go to. And I just don't think that's out there right now. Yeah. Some the peer commitment and so mm -hmm. Don't you been married for like 30 years? <laughs> <laughs> Contract wise. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Try percentage increase over last year. It was seven seven two, I think was the percentage increase. Okay. It was seven two. And so that's that's the important point. You know, I'll, I'll give you the tale of two renewal years. Um Last year, they, they quoted us a 5% renewal rate with the expectation that because of COVID monies that were coming into the state to boost up, that they were going to use to boost up the program, that 5% number would probably be zero. So we moved forward throughout the budget process, assuming 5%, and then the renewal number came in at like 10 and a half. Mm -hmm. um, that, that led to not just us, but every participating town to scream at the comptroller's office. And uh, that has been corrected su such that this year in January, they gave us an initial renewal window to expect 8 to 12%. And then in March, that was 8 to 10%. And then I think just at the end of March or beginning of April, they narrowed it down on it's going to be 7-2 um, with some other considerations in play. But uh, by and large, the community, and this gets back to what I was talking about with the, the predictability and the communication flow is much better than it was. And the year before that, it was zero. Yeah. Because nobody was going to the doctor because it was COVID. So there were no, no elective stuff going on. Other questions or comments? 
make a motion to authorize the first selectman to sign the Connecticut Prevention Partnership 2.0 contract, renewal contract for the next three year term. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> I'd like to add two agenda items and then probably pull the plug here. Um, I'd like to add as again item 8F, uh, discussion of a staff retreat facilitator. And as agenda item 8G, a discussion of the school building roof and HVAC RFP results. And authorization is recommended from the uh, building committee. Uh, a discussion of the school building roof and HVAC RFP result and authorization as recommended by the building committee. Make a motion that we uh, add item number eight F uh, for the staff receipt facilitator and the school work RFP results. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Um, although we have about five minutes to go, I don't think we have anything that we can dispatch in five minutes. So this seems like an appropriate time for us to take a recess until after the town meeting. I have a motion to recess. We move that we go into recess. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are in recess, recess at 724. <laughs> All right, it's 7.30. I'm going to call the special town meeting to order. Our first item of business is the, is the election of a moderator. Are there nominations? Sarah Muska, 25 Maple Avenue. I nominate Jason Bowser as moderator. Second. Motion is made. 23 Rice Road. Motion has been seconded. Are there other nominations? Are there other, are there other nominations? Are there other nominations? Move nominations be closed. Charlie Nardell, seven Grandview Terrace. Is there a second? Second, Sarah Musco. Motion has been made and seconded to close nominations. Any discussion on closing nominations? Seeing none, all in favor of closing nominations, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All in favor of Jason Bowser as moderator, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Okay. I'm now going to ask the town clerk to read the town meeting public notice. Madam Clerk. Town of East Windsor public town meeting notice. The legal voters of the town of East Windsor are hereby warned that a town meeting will be held in the John Daly Jr. meeting room, Town Hall, 11 Rice Street, Broadbrook, on Thursday, June 1st, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. for the following. One, to consider and vote on authorizing the use of federal and state grant monies to finance $500,000 for the revitalization of Osborne Field slash Volunteer Park. Two, to consider and vote on authorizing the use of federal and state grant monies to finance 150,000 for the acquisition of three emergency generators for replacement at Public Works, the Town Hall Annex, and new installation at the Community Center. Three, to consider and vote on authorizing the use of federal and state grant monies to finance 130,000 for the acquisition of a new Senior Center bus. Four, to consider and vote on authorizing the use of federal and state grant monies to finance $120,000 for engineering services for the replacement of the East Windsor High School track. Five, to consider and vote on the acceptance of Jesse Lane as a town road. Six, to consider and vote on the acceptance of Farms Road as a town road. Dated at East Windsor, Connecticut, this 25th day of May, 2023. East Windsor Board of Selectmen, Jason E. Bowza, First Selectman, Marie DeSouza, Deputy Selectman, Sarah Muska, Selectman, Alan Baker, Selectman, Charlie Nordell, Selectman. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Now I'm going to read the uh, statement of eligibility to vote. This is from Connecticut General Statutes, Chapter 90, Section 7 6. At any town meeting other than a regular or special town election, or at any meeting of any fire, sewer, or school district, or any other municipal subdivision of any town incorporated by any special act, any person who is an elector of such town may vote, and any citizen of the United States over the age of 18 years or more who jointly or severally is liable to the town, district, or subdivision for taxes assessed against him in an amount of assessment of not less than $1,000 on the last completed grant list of such town, district, or subdivision 
or who would be so liable if not entitled to an exemption under Connecticut General Statutes, subdivision 17, 19, 22, 23, 25, or 26 of section 12-81 may vote unless restricted by the provisions of any special act relating to such town, district, or subdivision. So with that business resolved, may I now ask whoever has item number one to state your name and enter the resolution for consideration. Yes, ma'am. Well, I have item one, uh, 91 North Road. To consider and vote on authorizing the use of federal and state grant, uh, grant monies to finance 500,000 for the revitalization of Osborne Field on the park. The next slide, please. I move for the foregoing resolutions to be adopted. Thank you, madam. Is there a second? Second. 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 Sir, name and address, please. Oh, Marie. <laughs> Mo, well, this was made and seconded. Is there is there discussion on the resolution? Is there discussion on the resolution? Is there discussion on the resolution? I'll do a second. Not our hearing hearing in road twenty eight. Would you like to speak, sir? Hmm? The motion has been made and seconded. I was calling for discussion. Would you like to, to discuss the resolution? Well, I support it. Or Is there any other discussion on the resolution? Yes, ma'am. Norie Farmer, 240 South Water Street. Um, I think it's a really good move for some money to have to fight the town. Um, tends to get well, somewhat forgotten about because the bigger parcels are over here. Um, I go there a lot with my granddaughter, and it's really well utilized. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot there for people to utilize. Um, but um, the volunteer park side, the riverside, almost every night in the summer, there are many people down there picnicking, just relaxing, watching the river. So um, I think it's a really good use of money um, in an area that will probably gain more use once it's spruced up a bit. <clears throat> Thank you, madam. Any further discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Who has item number two, please? Randy Clifton, Southern Hickory Trail. To consider and vote on authorizing the use of federal and state grant monies to finance $150,000 for the acquisition of three emergency generators for replacement at Public Works, the Town Hall Annex, and new installation at the community center. I move the foregoing resolutions be adopted. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? Second. Motion, Baker, right? Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the resolution? <clears throat> any discussion on the resolution? Yes, sir. Bill Wills, $44 total. In April 4, 1920, or 2023, we're here for the building over there, which is now the you know, Scout Hall. And uh, I attended some of the planning and zoning meetings and the building committee meeting. And the last meeting, I think it was, they approved a generator to be put in that building because they had to put in a sump pump because of the low water level over there. So the sump pump would have to be there, the generator would have to be put in in case there was no electricity to run a pump. So at that time, we voted for that. That was part of that four million seven hundred twenty thousand dollars. Now, why are we putting in another authorizing another fifty thousand dollars for that generator? We already put fifty thousand for that back in that vote on August fourth, April fourth. So I object to that. I agreed to have the other two generators, but not that one. So I think that should be taken down from one hundred fifty thousand to one hundred thousand. Uh, is there anyone who would like to speak to the comments? I would have to say that I think my memory was that the generator was not included in the cost of the building. They were just approving, planning and zoning just approved to put a generator as part of the site plan. But I don't know that we had a vote or appropriated any money specifically for a generator there at the community center. It's not my memory. 
Other comments? <clears throat> yes, sir. Not our carry here. What size generator? Did you need it? that big a generator? We got a big one here. How many times has that been used? You know, where well, you know. So just as a, a point of information, as, while I'm serving as the moderator, I'm not supposed to engage in, in back and forth debate. So I need to turn your questions over to anybody in the room who might be able to answer that. Yeah, okay, um, okay. And then we so get it. about 200 hours on this 100 kW generator. And the five, six years has been put in here. It's only six years old. This one here? Right? Yes. That's probably happened. Was it ever you? And yeah. I mean, yeah, every time the power goes out uh, during the storms, it ran for. Um, uh, we had a couple storms that ran for like a week, and you know I don't know exactly when it did. I don't. We don't keep records like that. But as far as uh, Mr. Los is concerned, a generator was not included. That was the zoning, the relocation of the existing generator. It has nothing to do with the sump pump we're putting in the building. The relocation of that, and it's my understanding that that generator, it only runs the pump station. So it, we cannot leave the generator that's there. It's not big enough to run the building. It only runs the pump station. Correct? Correct. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Any other discussion on the resolution? Yes, sir. Name and address, please. Well, it was in 89 Main Street. Purpose of the emergency generator is in case something happens, we don't expect it to run a lot. And if it doesn't, that means we didn't have that many emergencies, which is fine. But if something goes wrong, the power goes out, we want the facility to function. And the only way is to have a generator that gives you the electricity you need. Well, that, that's my question. I, I have one with them goes on automatically. And I've had power pairs, but you don't have to do a whole building to run that, those generators. Well, to help that answer the question also is the town's intentions are to use that as an emergency shelter in the fear of something happens like in 2010, where the power's out for two weeks because the high school doesn't have a generator. Only our facilities have generators, the fire departments, the town hall, public works, and the police department in the annex. And the annex can only hold about 100 people. If you put cots in there, you'd be lucky to get about 30. Yeah. And there are no showers or, you know, small bath, they're just small bathrooms down here. And I would imagine if something does happen like that, we're going to need to supply the police someplace to sleep. Other other comments? Yes, ma'am. Name and address. Uh, please. Sorry, Farmer, two forty seven Buckwater Street. And the generator for the annex will that that will do the police, the annex, the ambulance, everybody. So currently, right now, so I'm going to I'm going to ask the comments throughout the discussion to be directed through the moderator. Um, so I, I recognize your question, Mr. Sauerhofer. If you would currently, the, there are two generators down there. We the best have a two year old generator that we replaced two years ago. And then we took the one that they had, which was a 22 year old at the time and wired it into the annex. So the ambulance bay and the annex had power, emergency power. There are two different electrical meters down there. There's one on one end and one on the other. But everybody there is covered. Every, everybody there is covered. We just want to take rid of at least the old generator. We want to take the old generator out and put a new one in. Thank you. Other comments or questions on the resolution? Yes, sir. Uh, Joe Sauerhoff for Six Pierce Lane. If in fact there are funds left over, what happens to them? I, I, I can't. Amy's right there. <laughs> she's, not a, she's not eligible. I, I can answer, but I can't answer my own question. I'm sorry. If there's funds left over, then they can go back in and the board of selectors would have to figure out what to do with them. So they won't be wasted then. Um, and there's a time limit. I think what it has to be spent by the end of 2024. So if it's not spent by then, then it goes back to the federal government. Okay. Uh, it has to be allocated by 2024 and spent by 2026. Thank you. But there's also a possibility that they may be asking for the federal money to be returned 
back to the state. So um, I would encourage everyone not to let that happen. And vote so, yes on the generators, especially if you were around in 2010. Um, yeah. And if you're a senior and you don't have generators in your home, um, it got very cold for some of our elderly population. Um, there and that, there was no place to put them up. Our kill were using a small generator at the time up there. Um, people were housed over at the town hall annex for a little while, but there's really wasn't appropriate. This way, at least moving forward, we'll have the generators where they're needed. And if anything happens, God forbid it doesn't, but if anything happens, at least we'll be that far ahead. So I would encourage everyone to vote yes. Thank you, ma'am. You're saying that the planning sure. authority, there was a meeting that I met through, through that the I went to, that they did not approve a generator to be put into that building. At that meeting I was at, they approved that. And they had the main reason was for a sump pump. That's what I was told. Mr. Sarah, no, that's yeah, not my recollection of that. We've never figured a generator into that project other than relocating the existing generator because the, it will be on top of the building. Mr. Lopes, you're saying that the original plan now that we voted on in April did not have a generator on. Is that true? It, it, does, it does have a generator on the existing generator. Well, we're, Lopes, we're adding another generator now besides that one. No, we want to replace that one because it's only a 40 kW with a 100 kW that will run the building okay. and run the pump station. So they're going to replace the one you got over there. Well, they are going to sell that one? Three, yeah. three, 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 uh, who has it, uh, item number three, please? Thank you. Town meeting 23 right for Broadbrook. Item number three to consider and vote on authorizing the use of federal and state grant monies to finance 130000 for the acquisition of a new senior center bus. I move for I move the foregoing resolution to be adopted. Is there a second? Second. Barbara Sherman, 12 Island Drive, Broadbrook. Thank you, madam. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there discussion on the resolution? Yes, yes, ma'am. Are you a resident of the library? Are you a resident? I'm not a resident. I'm going to ask you to alter comments. Okay. Please. Are there any other comments on the resolution? Yes, sir. Oh, well, Anderson, 89 Main Street. Okay. Is there any restriction on where the senior buses take people? Is there anyone who would like to address that? What was your question? Are there's there... no restriction. Okay. Got an answer. The question was, are there any restrictions on where the senior bus can take people? And the answer is no. Thank you. Any other comments? I'll ask a second time. I have a question on that. Uh, how old the bus is and what year it is. Thank you, sir. Mr. Sarhoff. <laughs> You're reading apparently. <laughs> Thank you, <Kate. laughs> It is a 2010 with approximately 83,000 miles on it. Mr. Arcari. Okay, that's what I want to know. Thank you, sir. Any further questions or comments? Uh, yes, you in the back. I'm um, no, 23 Bright Road. The new van, the new bus van is handicapped accessible with a ramp. Mr. Yes, it's a 20 passenger with the handicap ramp in the back, just like the three we have now. Mr. Tommy. Further questions or comments? Yeah, they're trying to tonight. <laughs> All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Item number four, uh, Tom Nansner, 27 Laurel Circle. Item number four, consider and vote on authorizing the use of federal and state grant monies to finance $120,000 for engineering services for the replacement of the East Windsor High School track. I move the foregoing resolutions be adopted. Is there a second? Second, Sarah Muska, 25 Maple Avenue. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? 
Yes, sir. Name and address, please. Andrew Masters, 310 Rise Street. Um, I teach at the high school. I've been there for 24 years. I've been coaching track and field all that time. The track there is 30 years old. Um, we take very good care of the track and the field equipment. I go out and lead in the cracks uh, every couple of weeks. To, I maintain the, the track surface, but it does need to be replaced. It's long past its usable lifespan. It was a state-of-the-art track when it was installed 30 years ago, but it does need to be replaced. Um, lots of uh, people use the track besides the athletes and gym classes. And we have a lot of people that come to the school in the evenings to use the softball fields and whatnot. Um, I would urge the town uh, here assembled to vote in favor of this because we need it. Thank you, sir. Any quite any other comments? Yes, you in the back. Part of Brody Seven Mountain Court. I have a question about the material they're going to use to replace the tracks. Do you happen to know if they're going to do recycle tire? I don't know the answer to that. This um, is just to put forth the engineering proposal so that the project can be done. But if uh, it was replaced uh, in the manner in which other towns have done theirs, it would be a urethane rubber, a bonded urethane rubber surface okay. on top of, likely on top of poor country. Any other comments or, or discussion? Yes, ma'am. Name and address, please. Parker Sherman, 12 Island Drive. Um, this is just for the preliminary. Is there money then to replace the track? The money is to do the engineering work and then so seek grant funding thereafter. Answer questions. No. Yes, I did. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, item number five. Wayne Sherry, Depot Street. To consider and vote on the acceptance of Jesse Ling to the town road. I move for road resolution be adopted. Is there a second? Second, Tom Baker, Bradstreet. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes, sir. Larry Johnson, 12 Spring Street. I didn't hear what street he was talking about. Jesse Ling. I don't know where that is. It's in Windsor Road, in the middle east road. In the middle east road, it's in that cornfield on east road. Thank you. Satisfied, sir? Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Item number six. Paul Anderson, 89 Main Street, Broadway, to consider and vote on the acceptance of Farms Road as a town road. I move the foregoing resolution be adopted. Is there a second? Bill Rose, 44 Miller, Mr. Rowland. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Farms Road is off Depot Street. Um, is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So, so carried. With no further business to come before the town meeting, Mr. Chairman, I do have a point of clarification. It's a 2012 plus, not a 10. Okay. Just okay. thank you. Well, with, no, with no further business to come before the town meeting, a motion to adjourn would be in order. Is there a motion? I will make a motion to adjourn. I have a question. Why was this not put on a, a referendum? Thank you. Voted by the people. How many people got any represent? They represent the whole town. I can do that. Go ahead. I know you could. Okay. Uh, it is not town money that's being spent, not coming from our budget. This is on uh, federal and state grant money. I understand. And then it goes to town meeting. If the choice of the town meeting was to move to referendum, that motion could have been made. It was not. Yeah. Well, I just say that's federal money, and we're paying for this stuff indirectly. So we're a paying for which the taxes are going to go up. A motion, to, a motion to adjourn has been made. Is there a second? I'll second, second that. The motion has been made and seconded. It's not debatable. All in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned 752. Thank you all very much for coming out tonight. Awesome. Okay, it is 802. I'm going to reconvene the meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Um, referring to the agenda, agenda item 7B is a discussion of ARPA projects and proposals. 
Um, so we've now done three allocation or uh, three allocation rounds of ARPA, ARPA related projects. Um, there is a little bit of, fun, of federal funds remaining. There is chatter out of Washington, D.C. and out of the National League of Cities that um, there may be some clawback attempts at the federal level for any uncommitted funds. So what we're trying, what, what Amy and I have cooked up is uh, an opportunity for us to commit the remainder of our funds uh, so we uh, are somewhat immune from any, any potential sweeps out of Washington. So I have a couple of options for you guys to consider, and I do have a couple of options here. Um, this is not like we should do A, B, and C. These are really like, I'm going to lay some things out there and you guys can think about. Um, first, uh, our existing high side dump sweeper um, is 22 years old, I think. Um, 1992, uh, oh, no, it's 31 years old. Um, we are now at the position, point in time with this piece of equipment where, where we are throwing good money after bad. Uh, supply chain issues are making replacement parts more and more difficult to acquire. Last year, we were able to get about 70% of the town of East Windsor swept um, before the, the, we ran out of time because the machine went down and we couldn't get the replacement parts. Um, there is an updated quote that Joe's just handed out um, that shows that this project uh, acquisition will be $349,618. Um, you can't see that because of where the little speaker thing is, but if anyone to minimize that, that'd be fine. Um, so. Our fire departments uh, do not have a large cache of infrared fire cameras, which are used for if they're doing an accurate structure fire, um, actually being able to see where heat sources or people are on the inside of an active fire. Um, I had the opportunity to do some training with the Warehouse Point Fire Department uh, the week before last, and they simulated a, a building burning on the inside of a dormitory on Plantation Road. And if you are, closer than Paul Anderson and I are to each other right now, without these things, you cannot see anybody. Uh, it's, a, it's a safety risk. The fire departments have put in grant requests through the Greater Foundation for Greater Hartford Foundation for Public Giving and have not been successful in acquiring them. Um, so I asked the chief of the Warehouse Point Fire Department and the, assist, uh, the deputy chief of the Broadwood Fire Department to put together quotes for what their needs would be. Um, for $20,800, we would be able to get eight infrared fire cameras for each fire department. Um, so eight for each, total of 16. Wow. Um, so what this would allow for is more um, in-building firefighters to have equipment that could be used and essential to either saving somebody else's lives or their own. Uh, the BMX skate park, um, I'm throwing this out there for discussions, uh, for discussion that um, we could commit $10,000 to that project to, to date since their inception in 2009, I want to say. Um, they have um, been entirely self-sufficient without uh, any public funds going towards it. Um, they have dedicated volunteers. They're, they're making progress on turning that into something that they would like to, to see as a completed project. And I think this um, commitment of funds could be beneficial to that. Sidewalk improvements, the remainder, if, if all those other three things were to be uh, advanced to the Board of Finance and to a town meeting, that would leave our ARPA balance at $16,976. Um, sidewalk improvements scored very highly in the community survey, survey that was put out. We know that we have an active grant from the state uh, for the, the connectivity sidewalks in, in this section of Broadbrook, um, and that we're going to be liable for um, the municipal match for that. This could be put towards that. Um, this would mean that we would have done uh, sidewalk improvement projects on both sides of town, um, and we're going to have to pay the municipal share of this one way or the other. Um, so this is the, the allocation of funds as it currently stands. This would fully commit down to like, it's like $220 or something off of the, uh, the full ARPA allocation from the federal government if we were to move forward with this. Um, but one thing that I would throw out there just for discussion sake, um, I, when I was putting this together, I went back and looked at the community survey and the data that was provided by the 700 respondents in that. Um, and sidewalk improvements and road improvements scored very, very high. Um, we also know that because of the building permit fee that, that we've required, acquired from the Gravel Pit Solar Project, that our fund balance is going to be well in excess of our 20% uh, cap again. 
So there's going to have, have to be some commitment of public dollars um, to bring that back into compliance with the policy. Um, because the ARPA survey was specific to how we should spend ARPA dollars, um, what we could do is we could supplant the sweeper with and, and increase the, the balance for sidewalk improvements so that we're being true to what the respondents with the survey indicated as their priorities were with the understanding that we will need to replace the sweeper. We do need to do that if, if that's going to be functional. So that would, could be something if you're talking about moving money from, from one pocket to the other, where um, we could use down the road surplus funds uh, that are in the fund balance to cover that project. So I throw that out there as, as an alternative. Um, you'll notice one of the things that, that I have backed away from after having talked with you guys multiple times is the, the notion of a social worker position. I do still strongly think that that is something that we need to do, but if you all are more comfortable trying to do that through the normal budget procedure, I'm happy to do that. Um, so this is for conversation's sake, I throw that out there for, for you guys to discuss. Um, what are your thoughts? So your thinking is, is if, if we were to forego the sweeper, that re roughly 350 would go towards sidewalk, sidewalks and road improvements, yeah. and road improvements. Okay, we think that we need about 200,000 for the connectivity local match. Um, so that would be so we could put 200,000 towards that and about 160 for additional road improvements. Hmm. But we do need to do the sweep, right? Yeah, I need to stress that, All right? Um, but it's just a question of do we want to use ARPA dollars for doing that, or do we want to use undesignated fund balance dollars for doing that when the time comes? which isn't going to be till probably sometime this summer. Yeah, and if you don't sweep the roads, everyone's going to need to use the sidewalks. So, can you explain a little bit more on the his, the sweeper? You know, what is the age of the one we currently have again? 1992. And what? Nineteen ninety two. Okay. <laughs> it's funny. It was up and down Rye Street this week, and I was think I was actually thinking, man, that thing looks long and cute. Yeah, but it's been a nice job. Um, I ride my bike up and down. How many times did they have to go up and down? How many times did you see it going up and down? Yeah, it's trying to get one pass. Yeah, yeah. Across, it's horrible. And, you know, the room doesn't sit flat anymore. You know, the hopper. Doesn't no, no, I agree. Right. I, I agree. It's definitely old, and, and yeah. it really, I was surprised to see it go up and down twice. So it was there most of the, like all afternoon, basically. Yeah, we got we got through seventy percent of our local roads last year in terms of food. So I, I agree that's something we need to do. I guess I'm I, I really want to see that sidewalk project done, that loop. You know, so whatever we can do to advance that, I'm I'm all for it. Have we ever looked at a contract for having our roads swept by an outside vendor? So I'm pretty sure that would be bargaining network and breathable. Mm -hmm. ah. The other down so fall is when we do paving and stuff, we have to sweep the road after they mill it. Then we got to hire somebody. So cost wise, it's more practical. If we can get 30 years out of the next one. Yep. And you don't want to know what this is going to cost in 30 years. Well, no. <laughs> we'll be buying a fire truck worth of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Amy, are there any points that I missed that you, you want to add to this? No, I think either way you do it. They're, they're both needed things. So whether we do more sidewalk money and some road money or we do the sweeper, they're both necessary things. And I think all these projects are a great way to spend the rest of the ARPA dollars. If we do the sweeper, we can do it. Right. I'm saying I would prefer to do the sweeper with the ARPA money only because it's going to take, what, three or four months to come in, um, according to your thing, 180 days to whatever. Um, but with the solar panels, being the solar work that's being done on this side of town, people are complaining about all the dirt and stuff that's accumulating on the roads. And the um, so for me, that's a priority for those roads as that development down there on our roll and the others keep going and the dirt keeps hitting the pavement. Um, there's going to be some liability issues. So I'd rather do that and then use are over 20% to do the sidewalks and the roads because because that's going to take time to do. And I think either way would be perfectly fine. I, I think you make a good point about the timing in your answer. Yeah. 
Do we have an anticipated dollar amount coming from the fund balance yet? No, but it's going to be, we're going to return, a, what are you expecting, 400000 this year? Yes. Um, plus, so I mean, you want to get the rundown of this earlier. I'm going to get my numbers jumbled. Can we just run, run through that? Yeah, so we took in the $1.9 million building permit relating to Raptor Pit Solar. Yeah. So that covered all the budgeted and additional appropriations we did all throughout the year. So our revenue will exceed instead of needing to use fund balance. So basically all the things we did to use fund balance this year are undone by that one large building permit coming in. Yeah. Um, so in the summer, we're going to have to go forward because at some point the uh, building official will need assistance from an outside agency for all his permitting and inspection stuff he needs to do. Right. Yeah. So at some point we will be going back anyhow. So, but right now we have covered everything we took out of it last year in our efforts to lower it. But you're, you're talking five to seven percent overage. Okay. So <laughs> probably at least a million bucks would be my guess. Okay. So plenty enough to cover so sidewalks sidewalk or this truck. Well, okay. Either way, if we fund those sidewalks by either method, are we going to get it done this year? Does it look like? We're waiting on the state, but as soon as the state gives us a go, this guy's ready to go. Okay. So, I mean, just a matter of putting it out. Six weeks later, we'll have a contractor hired. And... As far as the BMX skate park upgrades, is that just is that earmarked towards a specific project there, or would you be leaving it up to the committee as to what they're looking to do there, or how would that work? That's not it, uh, designated for a specific project. They actually have a project. They have a project, a master, work, a master plan they're working on, and they've been cutting away at it piece by piece by piece because it's you can. Purchase it in sections of pieces, but they do have a full master plan as to what they are um, trying to achieve there. Um, and when they achieve a certain benchmark that they can purchase the next piece of equipment, that's what they do. Um, so every bit in their kitty helps contribute them getting towards the next piece. With, uh, and I don't know the results of their last fundraiser, the the um, golfing, golf they, outing. They netted about four. Okay. Um, that I think brings them to the next purchase amount of having enough money to get the next piece that they wanted. Um, so they'll be purchasing that and then basically starting all over again to get, you know, fundraising to get the next the next piece. So every, every bit counts and different pieces are different dollar amounts. So and the longer it goes on, the more these pieces become price tag wise. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think getting to the BM skate part is good because we haven't done anything for them I uh, since their onset and they're all volunteer. So, um, that's a win win. And I think cameras are a win win for both fire departments. Um, Definitely so. in favor of the cameras. Appreciate you guys' work that you did. These items bring to us. So this depletes our ARPA allocation with just shy of four hundred thousand dollars left. Is there anything else that we haven't addressed that you guys think is important or that was um, reflected in the survey results? Are you comfortable with it, with this as presented? I'm comfortable with this, but you might know some money for the American Heritage Program. We, got, we did that last time. Yeah. We did, 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 did get in there. I just wanted to refresh to make sure because, okay. Yeah, they were here tonight because they thought the vote on that was tonight. Well, that's why I'm here. It's, it's, so it's, that would go to my board um, at my board of finance meeting um, in the third Wednesday. That's how I said. Well, it hasn't gone anywhere yet. Yeah. You guys had your meeting after my meeting. I know. I, that's how I explained it. Okay. They'll be ready next time. I agree with it also. I think we addressed all the different areas that were given in the survey. So it's quite a bit of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, then um, let's do these. Uh, let's ask for a motion to do these individually. Um, so we're sending it to the Board of Finance and then to a town meeting yep. for approval. Okay. Um, 
Now move that we use our ARPA funds in the amount of $349,618 for a high side dump sweeper, um, send to the Board of Finance for recommendation and to a town meeting upon approval. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Move that we spend ARPA funds in the amount of $20,800 on infrared fire cameras um, to the Board of Finance to consider and if approved, send to a town meeting. Second. Any discussion? Yes. Um, what's the asterisk on the $20,800? The asterisk was to remind me to tell you guys that that was eight cameras per department. Okay. <laughs> um, so a total of 16 cameras. I just wanted to make sure that I, I had that as a reminder to share that, that information. Okay. Um, I'll move uh, wait, we got oh. oh, I'm sorry. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, I'll move that we spend $10,000 of ARPA funds on the BMX skate park improvements. Um, recommend to the Board of Finance for approval and upon approval, send to town meeting. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. That we spend sixteen thousand nine hundred and seventy six dollars of ARPA funds on sidewalk improvement and ask the board of finance to approve and upon approval send to town meeting. Second the motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Ms. Ramsey. Hi. So we're joined tonight by um, the new library director for the Warehouse Point Library. Would you like to come up? Well, we grab a chair and join us. I'll sit in this chair. Very well. <laughs> welcome. It's nice to have you here. Thank you. I feel welcome. <laughs> so tell us about yourself. Okay, sure. Um, I'm Erin Ramsey. I grew up in Suffield, um, and I've been working in libraries for... 18 years, uh, went to New York and came back, and now I'm very happy to be the new director of the Warehouse Point Library. And uh, it's been wonderful so far. Uh, everyone here in the town is friendly. My staff is great, knowledgeable, and, and warm. And uh, I'm really delighted and optimistic about what we're going to do in both the library and the library's connection to our community. Uh, and uh, I'm open to thoughts, suggestions, uh, you know, ideas about what we can do as a library uh, in terms of, you know, things that people need and haven't gotten yet. And uh, because the library fills a space that, you know, sometimes, you know, there's that gray area where maybe government doesn't take care of something and maybe the village doesn't exist anymore. And that's where the library steps in. So I'm delighted to work on that with everyone. I, I would just, and I shared this with you when we first met in your office, but I, I met with Erin her first week here. And as I'm waiting by the, the circulation desk, she came bouncing out of her office with an exuberance and an energy that I find incredibly contagious. Um, and I just think that, that we have a breath of fresh air there. Um, we, talked, we had a great conversation about some ideas of building on the relationship between town and the library and what the library can do in terms of connectivity within the Warehouse Point Village. And I think there's lots of opportunity there. Um, for the benefit of, of my board members, do you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, feedback? Um, can I be open and candid without any disrespect meant? I am ready to hear anything you have to say. Um, there was an art display at the library. Mm -hmm. um, it was supposed to be for the entire month of May. Um, the last day being in the close of business on the 31st of May. Um, because of situations, I wasn't able to get there until five o'clock yesterday with my granddaughter who had art displayed and my daughter. And we planned on taking pictures and taking her out only to find to discover that they were taken down during the day. 
I'm really sorry to hear that that happened to you. Uh, I would take the blame, uh, but the I'm not scheduling was one the take major. Blame, but if yeah. we're going to put something out there saying that there's a deadline at the close of a mm -hmm. business day yeah. for some of us that have a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. um, yeah. it was kind of disappointing on um, my first thing. Yeah. Um, so next year's art display, I will make sure that the teachers take down the art after the last day that it's advertised. And I'm I'm really sorry that it happened to you. I mean, it happens, and I'm not criticizing, but I just yeah, ask for comments. I'll yeah. make sure. No, but that is valuable because there is a communication issue that is easy to fix, and now I know about it, and we can fix it. But I do, on the other flip side, there's a lot of activities that have been added to the library since you've taken over, too, that I've noticed, um, which is good, and the pictures that you put out there are valuable. Um, so keep up the good work. So that is the goal. Um, our strength historically has been in children's programming, mm -hmm. especially for the little ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, that means that, you know, there's a gap there. And so, uh, in fact, I'm delighted to announce that we have received a grant for a senior art program coming and we're going to do it in the fall. We received twenty five hundred dollars mm -hmm. from a private organization called uh, Creative Aging. Some, something to do yeah. creative aging. And uh, we're going to hire a teaching artist, and uh, it's explicitly only for seniors. So there's my exciting announcement for today. Questions, comments? I kind of understand that a lot of people use the library that are kind of may not have access to, uh, you know, the, the internet, wireless, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen in Vermont and in, in towns at some libraries where they have a public wireless that's accessible to the whole village, basically around the 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 library. Is that I'm, I'm assuming that's a federal thing to get that funding uh, to get that done? Not necessarily. It depends on the budget of the library, the budget of the town, or whoever funds the library, and the motivation of the community. So right now we. Because right now we have Wi Fi fied the parking lot, right. uh, which is great for people uh, if they come outside of library hours or even if they don't want to come inside for whatever reason, they can use the Wi Fi in the parking lot. And uh, it shouldn't cost too much more than a couple of hundred dollars to make the entire library property and for perhaps even up to the memorial usable for the internet. Uh, it's just a question of mention it to me, and I will chug along at it for a year and a half, and then maybe it'll happen. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. And welcome. Thank you. She's been here a couple of weeks. She already has a realistic expectation of the timeline. <laughs> I've been in libraries long enough that I know that that timeline was very optimistic. So. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and. Uh, you know, not just to all of you here on the selectmen's committee, uh, select people, uh, but also everyone in the town. Uh, my door is open to anyone who wants to participate. Thank you. We look forward to a good relationship moving forward. Thank so, you. Uh, just as a, a sidebar, uh, sidebar, have you have you met Paul Anderson yet? Yes, we've met a couple times. Okay, just we we're sure. at the um, the Hartford Foundation grant meeting together, and today. We'll see each other some more. Yes, in fact, I made arrangements to stop by your library on Wednesday. Okay, good. So, Aaron, consider us a resource if there is uh, if there are ways that we can be supportive of the work you're trying to do. Um, our door is always open. I will definitely appreciate guidance on that AC project. Yeah, sure. But yeah, thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. You too. Yes. Go back. <laughs> Um, returning to the call of the agenda, I'd like to uh, table agenda item 8C until after our executive session. I'll move we table agenda item 8C until after executive session. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, so I'm going to hand these out. Um, apologies for the late notice. I got the draft back this afternoon. Um, this is a uh, just a one pager, so it shouldn't be overly burdensome. Um, but while you guys are thumbing it over, I'll just 
explain to the, the folks in the audience what we're doing. We've been talking for quite some time about the establishment of a youth service bureau, um, and I've utilized the town attorney to go through the, the appropriate process to establish that. Um, we've reviewed the general statutes and the regulations that govern youth service bureaus, um, or youth service advisory boards is the actual term. Um, this is a draft ordinance that would create a youth service advisory board um, and would, would allow for the general oversight of uh, youth services to uh, be created. Uh, it has a couple of uh, mandatory participants. Um, in some cases, those folks that we have are not town residents. Um, and because it's, it's, if we're going to appoint resident electors, we can uh, appoint non residents as resident electors. So, uh, in those cases where it's likely we don't have a resident elector that fits our needs, uh, they've been designated as ex officio for this purpose. Um, it would be chaired by a member of the Board of Selectmen. Um, and then we there's a couple, or at least one blank we need to fill in, which is the um, the number of members we would like to see on it, but it outlines the minimum of qualifications and experiences that we would like to incorporate. We just need to establish what that the full complement looks like. Can we ask a question? Absolutely, lay it on me. At least one third of the total membership in the compromise of individuals who receive less than fifty percent of the income from delivering services to use. So if I'm a use Councilor, I can't be on the board. Nope, you you can be on the board as long as you are one of those one third members uh, who derives less than half of your income. So two thirds two thirds of the membership has to derive less than half of their income from the direct delivery of these service programs. But one third of the membership can derive more than fifty percent of their income from the direct delivery of these services. So the board of selectmen is a member of the board of selectmen will serve as the chair. Board of selectmen terms are two years, assuming it's not the first selectman that is the chair. Um, and these members who serve. Of the new services board will for three years. So then there would be a shift if somebody didn't choose to be on board again or wasn't could be. Yeah. Okay. You have an idea of how many people you want on here. You have yeah, this open is. Again. It's open. There are six required slots. Three of them are uh, in the ex officio category because we don't have any police department employees who are town residents, and the community services director does not live in East Windsor. Um, and what was the third one? Uh, oh, it's open ended whether a representative of the school system would be a, a in East Windsor resident or not. So what I was thinking that would be a reasonable number would be seven. Um, but that's up to us to, to discuss. It gets a little big after that. Mm -hmm. Well, seven plus potentially three ex officio is 10 people in a row. That is a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we do five. If you want to put but five, doesn't check all of the boxes that are required in the statute. So I think seven's kind of where I am. Seems good to me. Resident electorate thing is what jams up a little bit. Yeah. I'm sure this is the case in every case. Okay. 
Come, just wait. You got one, two, three, four, five, six here, counting the extra official numbers. Mm -hmm. Where are you coming up with 10? So the official numbers don't count towards quorum. They don't count towards quorum. So, okay. so I was thinking right. seven seated seven. members with up okay. to potentially three okay. ex officio members. Two we know for sure. So is this state statute driven for you add like a resident of town? So it, it, that yeah. doesn't have any is not under 21 years old and doesn't have any um income coming from services to use. So you asked two questions there. The answer yeah. to your first one is is this statutorily yeah. driven? The answer is yes. Yeah. Um, secondly, could you add somebody who doesn't fit into one of those prescribed yeah. uh, categories? The answer is yes. Okay. Um, what this what the statute lays out is those those uh, folks who need to be participants, but the number of total membership is to be set by us. Okay. And as long as we satisfy what the statute says, we can add whatever degree we feel appropriate. Uh, the only caveat to that being is the um, at least one third of the, the total membership. Right. That that provision applies to the totality of the right. So the six would be listed, right. seven could be as you right. thought, and then more than that, I think is too much. Too much, I agree. I agree. I was also thinking in terms of quorum considerations. Yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think seven is good. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes seven? Mm -hmm. Yes. Any other changes or, or, or suggestions you want to incorporate here? Um, so this is going to be comprised of volunteers and paid town employees potentially mm -hmm. how does that work they're free to charge the town as they serve on this board so about the, the employees that would end up on this board you know like police and <laughs> they, they would be you know whatever the terms of their employment agreement would govern so if, if it's overtime they would get overtime it's comp time worthy they would get comp time if it's during normal business hours or flexible time all that controls. Um, would it be necessary to state in here how often this board would meet or no? Or what? The, yes, like, well, it says what the duties are, but would it be appropriate? Like, how often would this board meet? One second, I'll look up the statute. I think it's in the statute. Okay. I heard it's so based upon the needs. Of it. And we don't know what the needs going to be, but I would assume in the short term it will probably be greater than what we anticipate. Yeah, I think that at first they'd have to meet on kind of a regular basis mm -hmm. to get themselves organized, but after that it might be ad hoc, ad hoc once, you know. Mm -hmm. Is not in statute. Okay. So it's up to us to determine if we, if we wanted to do that. The requirement is uh, to, to DCF about uh, reporting 
and we've been working on that anyway through through the existing structure we have. I'm excited to see this moving forward. I think it's, this is necessary and it's a step in the right direction to get it going again. So very glad to hear you say that because if it passes. <laughs> so you need a motion to approve it? If you guys are satisfied with the draft with that direction that the the it be seven members, yeah. Would that be approved as special town meeting? Yes, we need the normal process. It needs to be a meeting. Move to approve the ordinance concerning youth services advisory board with the number seven members included in section one and send it to a town meeting. Is there a second? Second. Made and seconded. Is there discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank you guys for your patience on this. Good things come to those who wait, but we are making good progress. Um, this is kind of a, a initial polling the group, I guess. But uh, in November, we did a, a full staff retreat, all staff, all departments, um, for some team building and leadership development work. Um, I'd like to do the same thing again. Um, so I'm trying to get the, the company that we use, they're called uh, Empower Leadership, um, to set a date for sometime probably after Thanksgiving, just like we did last year, where we could have them come in and facilitate uh, some additional trainings. Um, there was a, a financial obligation last time, so I just wanted to feel you guys out if you're supportive of that as in terms of moving forward with it. And if so, I'll get a contract um, that we can commit before this fiscal year runs out so we don't need to do any added appropriation for it. Um, you you attended, did yes. you not? I did. What did you think? I thought it was worthwhile for the town employees to get together um, and get them out of the everyday work environment where they can actually got to know them each other and did some <laughs> team building exercises so that they could work together um, in an enjoyable kind of manner. Um, and I think it opened up the doors for a lot of the employees to feel more comfortable around each other since you know, we did a lot of new people all the time. Um, so I I would recommend to do it. I think it's probably one of the better things that have happened um, for the employees in a while. Um, putting them up there. I failed to miss the other last year. <laughs> So uh, when if we were to move forward with this, once we get the date scheduled, I'd, I'd extend the invitation to the board as well. Um, I know three of you have have work obligations, um, but you know maybe with enough planning, we can facilitate it so that you can become a part of it in the way. What was the cost last year? I'd say it was twenty one hundred dollars, but I'm not. I'm, I hope to have a contract by tonight, um, but I don't have it yet, so I can't give you the, the real quote. I want to say it was twenty one hundred dollars. Okay. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, then I do expect that by the next time we meet, which we'll decide at a, you know, later on, um, that I'll have the contract in place that we can take a look at, and if you guys are good with it, I'll ask for your authorization to sign. Okay. Okay, Mr. Tower Hopper. So we we put the um, school building group and HVAC projects out to bid. Um, <laughs> how about the click notes? Hi, well, I just first I want to apologize. The package is so big, we could not email it out to y'all. This is all of the bids. Okay. I'm sorry, sorry, I'm probably. Oh, I think I have. I know you have it. But... So this is all of the bids, all of their background, everything we asked them, everything we requested, right down to their license. So on the 22nd of, of May, the building commission met and we went over, we, well, we went over the, the low bid, the low bidder, and disqualified the low bidder for the simple reason is um, part of part of our bid. We're requesting a 
master plan be done in the school, school assessment, master plan, strategic plan, everybody has a different name for it, but basically to assess all three schools to give us a list of, you know, what they need, what's where their needs are. They're a quarter of the money that everybody else is, and they were outsourcing it. So it, it, it's, it's, it's under my opinion that we should, I believe we should keep this all under one roof to try to deal with different people. It, it just gets very confusing. It's, it's a big project. So then the, it came down to um, Russell and Dow and uh, QA, I changed glasses, I can't read. QA and M. Um, doing, doing my due diligence, I called their references both. They both came out with good references, uh, but QA and M came out better. I, I like what I heard. They're, they're willing to give us a $15,000 discount if we join, um, if, if the school signs up and joins at NASDAQ. NASDAQ. Uh, I talked to the superintendent and he was looking into it. He recalls getting some emails and stuff and he says it's a very minimal amount of money that he'd be more than willing to do that because we'd save money. Um, QA&M does everything in-house is very familiar with the HVAC grants. And that's key for us because the grant could come back out maybe September, October, and they are under, understanding that and they'll know we're ready and that's what we want to do. The roof design, you know, and the other roof, you know, is secondary, but the primary goal here is number one, the high school roof, number two, getting us in the situation we need to be in for the HVAC grant money. So that being said, after all that, um, I and you guys have a copy of it, CGS, our consultant, came up with the same conclusion to go with to go with QA and M. There, there as a matter of fact, uh, Russell and Dower, they're actually neighbors and they're outsourcing the uh, a little bit of the master plan. So I'd like to really stay with one person and it makes it so much easier. And with that, the building committee also agreed and recommended that you guys go with QA and M. Um, we're, you know, using, you know, using CSG helps out a lot and, you know, they're, we're right there. We're ready to get a contract out and get them hired. Old. I got the photo. <laughs> so again, I apologize. I didn't get you guys a packet, but the packet basically is everything we asked in the RFP. And um, the the thing I liked about them also is that they've worked on HVAC pro this this specific grant where we're eligible for the money. So so the um, as I'm looking at the. Well, 1A is total project cost, right? Total project cost. Now, keep in mind, and I know, you know, I requested $100,000 per school per, for HVAC. And what we're going to do for the HVAC projects is we're going to do the preliminary. We're going to do the bare minimum, the basics, what we need to do to get the grant going and get, get be able to throw our, you know, our, our application in. If in fact that grant money doesn't show up and we never get it, or we didn't spend all of that engineering money on stuff we're not going to do. So you know we're we're going baby steps basically with the HVAC. As far as the roof projects go, that's turnkey. We'll have the plans, boom, done. We'll park the one for across the street at the elementary school, and then we'll figure out funding and how we're going to get the money for the high school. So the the QA and M total cost is seventy five grand. Mm -hmm. Well, no total cost. That's just for the master plan. It's broke out. Total cost for oh, number seven. Yeah, okay. So there, but I want I want to draw your attention to, to column one A. Um, so you note that there's a fifteen thousand dollar credit if the the school district joins whatever Nesdeck is. Yes. Is that seventy? Is seventy? Is it ninety thousand? But it's seventy five thousand if 
the school enrolls, or is it seventy five thousand? No, seventy five thousand dollars, and it's a fifteen thousand dollar credit. If off of that, off of that, so, so they will ultimately be the low bidder. Yeah, so they would. Yeah, right. They would go from from right. two sixty two down to two forty seven, which is twelve grand cheaper than the other guys. Right. Your recommendation is two A and M. Jim Giuliano's recommendation was QA and M. The building committee's recommendation was QA and M. Mm -hmm. Okay. No brainer. Want to make a motion? Matter of fact, I think QA and M just they did JFK or not? Yeah, right. And Enfield, they were the architects oh, that the did school, that. Not the, airport. the school, yeah. I might be on the airport. So. Have you seen that? Inside? No, I'm dying. I actually was close to going in for a tour, but something came up. I just don't want to know. Well, you know, <clears throat> it was in this town. There wouldn't be a square we wouldn't use. All right. So we're are authorizing them and you need a signature as well on them. Yes, please. So I would move that we the town of East Windsor enters contract with QA and M architecture for the roof master planning um, for the school system. And we authorize first selectman uh, to sign. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Just for clarification, I want to I want to make known that the bid results are for master planning services, roof design, and HVAC design in total. Um, discussion. Thank you very much. My All pleasure. in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. So I don't know if this is, and you can tell me to go sit down. But now that the the um, ARPA money for the track, I would like to use. The consultant CGS to help me with a bid proposal to go out for an architect. Are, are you you guys okay with that? I mean, we're going to put it out to bid, but I'd like to have uh, CGS. They've told me that they can get us up to fifty percent reimbursement on the track. Oh, they've already they, they just finished one. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> so I'd just like to use them for help as the consultant, and then move forward. Is um, what are the terms that we have with CSG? Well, they're an hourly. They're they're an hourly rate with us, so that we'll just carry over, and I can get a fresh contract from them, or see if they'll amend the contract we have with them. I'd like to see if we can do an amendment. Though. Yeah, if you guys are all right with that. If not, I mean, they 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 know the ins and outs of school stuff and getting the money back. You guys comfortable with looking at an amended contract there? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. I'll bring it next meeting. Put me on the agenda because I just love coming. Oh, you need to punch my card. I want to get a punch card no. and fill out every 12 times I get a 12 pack. You and Jason both. <laughs> twice. Yeah, twice. Awesome this year. Yes. Um, have you checked with the school to see if they've Part of this I talked to the superintendent. He said he's seen emails, he's seen stuff come across. He is more than willing to join. There, they gather, they gather all the statistics. So it, it helps the engineering firm not have to go after all that stuff. So I think that's all they really do. Okay, so then the school will be responsible for updating the program. Yeah, yeah, I'm, and you know, I'll I'll reach back out to him, and you know, I know he's busy, and I figured I'd just wait till after the end of the year, and then I'll just go stand in his office until he pays attention to me, like I do with the first select. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I lay on the ground and cry. Thank you, Joe. Thank You're you. welcome. Um, okay, we're on to selecting reports, and as crazy busy as it has been, I don't have very much that's ready to to share publicly here. Um, but I do have a couple of things. As you all know, but for the, the record in the general public, over the last few weeks, um, the Board of Selectmen and Representatives of the Police Commission finalized the search process for our new Chief of Police, the first time in 20 years. Um, I'm delighted to note that Matthew J. Carl has been selected as the fifth Chief of Police for the East Windsor Police Department and is the first to rise entirely through our local ranks to attain the position. Congratulations and best wishes to Chief Carl. This past weekend, there were two really good uh, Memorial Day ceremonies that took place. Uh, the first was at the Melrose Cemetery on Sunday, 
Um, and there were probably 150 people there ish. Um, and then the warehouse point, um, uh, the, the Veterans Parade in Warehouse Point was the best it's been in many years. It was fantastic. Um, hundreds of people participated in both. Um, and I linked to the uh, text of the speech that I gave on Memorial Day. Um, coming up on June 15th, the town summer concert series kicks off at East Windsor Park at 6 p.m. Band for the evening will be Murphy's Law, and we'll also be launching our second annual small business passport program with local businesses on display and passports available to the general public. Um, everything else you guys are already aware about. We've spent a lot of time together, so uh, I'll leave it there. Murray. Oh, yeah. Um, I um, was able to um, United Ag and Turf um, participate in their uh, grand opening um, that they had. Um, basically, it was out of town, so I got to really represent the town. Um, if you haven't been up there, go up there. If nothing else but the equipment that's on display up there inside the building um, from Deep Larissa and Penn Race Road, um, some old equipment. Um, but go up there, I was honored to do that um, on behalf of the town. Uh, meetings. Um, I've been short on meetings. Um, last night there was a water pollution control authority meeting. Unfortunately, um, I had some issues yesterday and wasn't able to attend. Um, so I stopped by there this morning um, and talked um, to get some information. Um, equipment that was out to purchase back in 2021 um, finally got noticed that it's being shipped. Um, in much anticipation, they're glad to have it, um, which will allow them now to um, do the repairs that are necessary on Route 140 by the Scanning Bridge area um, over there. And um, they did get notification also that other equipment that they were waiting for that they need to use, they're called variable frequency drives. Um, that uh, they'll be able to use, and they're going to continue working on uh, Pleasant Street um, to fix the uh, work that's there. And I think he said probably maybe next week you might see somebody out there. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you're not at a quick tutorial. Um, so that's going good. Um, they also have decided to hold uh, the line on the cost for sewer. It is not going up in the cost, which is good for the community. That cost is not going up there. Um, they had some representatives in looking at the operation um, and suggested to them, um, because it's in such a, a fine order uh, based upon the number of years it is, that maybe they should probably open up something uh, for TERS at some point moving forward. They also were in the process of um, checking all the lines um, to make sure there's no blockage or any damage to any of the pipes and stuff. They've done the entire Broadbrook side of town, part of Route 5 in 140. My mind serves me correctly, but there's a chunk within Warehouse Point that they're working on, and they have this whole go down there. There's a whole map on the wall, and everything is color coding, which they got left, and hoping to complete that um, this year. So uh, I think that's everything that was covered. Um, if I missed anything, I'll report it next meeting. Uh, and that's all I have. Thank you, Adam. Now, uh, there was really nothing much to report from them, um, basically from the land use boards. Uh, I was here all day yesterday, with negotiations with the police union contract. Um, I think we'll have news in the next few weeks on that. And uh, that's all I have for you. Thank you, sir. Um, Sarah. Mr. Sauerhofer gave my report on the building committee. <laughs> uh, I did attend both Memorial Day events that Jason previously mentioned. Um, and today I did um, get to cheer on our police department for the Special Olympics Law Enforcement Torch Run. Um, members of the PD ran from the Enfield Town Line to the South Windsor Town Line um, on Route 5, and I sat at Flower Power and watched them go on by. So. Kudos to them um, for their hard work. And that's all that I have. Sure. Yeah, I don't have much either. Um, congratulations to uh, Matt Carl on becoming our new uh, chief. Um, that whole process was a lot of time and work for all of us, but it was very eye opening and, and a great experience nonetheless. And uh, I think we got 
definitely the best choice um, from that. Uh, Memorial Day was great this year. It's good to see everyone coming out and enjoying that. The weather was perfect for it, and the uh, ceremonies worked out really well. And uh, that's it. That's all I've got. All right. Public participation. Just public second opportunity to address, to address members of the board of selectmen. If you'd like to address the board, please state your, your name and your address. State your business. Is there anyone who would like to address the board of selectmen? Yes, sir. David and Dresden. Well, board of Formal Original. I'm concerned about the cost that we're getting out for fixed when we go out to things like the park up here. We went out, someone got to get a bid. It came in way over what you had proposed that we pay for that park. I think it was almost twice the cost. I'm wondering who does the initial cost for estimates, like for the scout hall. Who does the initial cost for the 4.7 4.72 million. Was that done by uh, a company? So you have a couple of questions there. Yes. The the first to answer your question, there were not two bids that were um, there were not conflicting bids that that affected the playground. The first one was an estimate from the um, planning architect that that the town used, and they were way off, and we will not be using them again. Um, so when, when we actually put the project out to bid, that's when we got the true cost of the project and, and had some eye-popping conversations around like the mist that was there from the, uh, the design person. So they're out. Um, regarding the, the $4.72 million quote at the community center, that was done by a professional estimator um, that we paid to actually provide us with a, a real-time quote updated so that we knew specifically what to present to the voters. So that is, that is a real number. Are there added appropriations like we paid fifty million or fifty thousand dollars here night for a generator that wasn't in here in the building? Was there how about the line that goes from Route Five the water line up to the Cow Hall? Is that in part of that? Yeah, like, that's part of that. Yes. How about added uh, solar panels on a roof down here for added power? There, there are panels that exist on the, the barn that uh, meters to the same building that, that we would be. Are they adequate for the new? Probably not. Probably not, right? You're going to have to add more. Are those in that quote? No. Well, that's another added appropriation. We decided building. to do it, but right. that's not yeah. contemplated at this time. Are there other things like that that have to be added? Not that we're aware of. Not, not right now. Whenever you go going out for bid for that? As soon as we're able. We're working with USDA on that. Okay, thank you. Are there other uh, comments for the board? Yes, sir. Name and address. Oh, you you done 89 Main Street. <laughs> but what if you are the solar system that exists at the Scout Hall 9 now is a nine kilowatt system? This is for information purposes. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board of selectmen? Seeing none, we will have an executive session. It will be just the five of us, and there will be action to follow. Um, could I have a motion to go into executive session? Move that we go into executive session. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are in executive session at 9.01 p.m. Peg, I'll get the video up as soon as I'm able. It's 1044. We're out of executive session. Now turn to the uh, call of the agenda. Take up agenda item 8C, discussion and possible vote on the employment agreement of Matthew J. Carl as chief of police. Is there a motion? Yes, I move to approve the employment agreement between Matthew J. Carl as chief of police and the town of East Windsor and authorize the first selectman to sign said agreement. There is a second. Motion made by Sarah, seconded by Alan. Is there any discussion? Um, I would just like to say that um, after an extensive search um, and long process we went through, I'm really excited that um, Matthew is taking on this role. I think we picked the best candidate for the department and the community. Um, the dedication he's shown over the last 27 years being here in East Windsor and working his way up through the ranks and 
his commitment and dedication has really been apparent in the past few weeks, marching in the Memorial Day Parade with us and um, just being active in the community. So I look forward to see what's to come. Very well said. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote yes. <laughs> Anybody opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Is there any further business to come before the Board of Selectmen? We adjourn at 10.45 p.m. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. We are adjourned at 10.45 p.m. Mm -hmm.